roads into Kandy are heaving. But most travellers have just one thing in mind, to get to the Parahera. It's still five hours before the Buddhist festival everyone has come to see even takes to the streets. But already crowds are gathering. These fine fellows are among the most important guests, the length of their tusks and trunks dictating their role in the ceremony. Behind the scenes, preparations are well underway. There's a sense of excitement and anticipation. Elephants are dressed up in elaborate refinery hours before the start of the procession. This is just the beginning of the process. As you can see, it's not an easy task. So, how long does it take to dress an elephant? Well, I watched and waited for two and a half hours. Finally, the costume is complete. According to Buddhist belief, this massive beast has the greatest honor of all, to carry the gold casket, which by day houses one of Buddha's teeth, retrieved from his ashes after he died. Security fears and reverence for the sacred means the actual tooth remains inside the temple, while its custodian presides over the ceremony in its honor. Every year we get this auspicious time due to Sri Lankan tradition. Uh, either in month of July or August, we call it Full Moon Poe Day. So on this Full Moon Poe Day, Poe Day we will conduct this procession. The procession makes its way through the streets of Kandy with songs and dances in praise of the relic. The master of ceremonies steps out at the end, dressed in traditional costume, in accordance with the belief that whoever possesses the tooth theoretically has the right to rule Sri Lanka. It's a symbol of kinship, and it has a crown, it has a jacket, and several colors of clothes, and specially made belt, shoes, and special, uh, special kind of knife. That is the Candian tradition. With beating drums, energetic dancers and lively music, it's a fantastic show. But first and foremost, it's a religious festival with huge And the focus of it all is here, at the Temple of the Sacred Tooth. This is the most important temple for Buddhists across the world and has been the guardian of Buddha's left wisdom tooth for the past 400 years. Here, barefoot pilgrims bring Sri Lanka's traditional flower, the lotus, as offerings, before gathering to pray and reflect at the shrine. what's behind this curtain then this inside the first silver door we are going to upstairs second golden door third elephant's ivory door and the fourth bulletproof glass inside the Buddha's tooth relic casket that is seventh covering golden casket inside the Buddha's tooth up to golden lotus flower The tooth shrine is decorated with garlands of jasmine. Devotees are only allowed to see the tooth itself once every five or six years, 
at an auspicious time dictated by the stars. And what's on the curtain? These are the prince and princess. Prince and princess from North India. She name is Hema Mala. His husband name is Sudanta Dant. She brought the Buddha's tooth, North India to Sri Lanka. Buddha's tooth hidden in a hair. That, it's said, was more than a thousand years ago. Today, the shrine and the festival associated with it attracts thousands every year. Uh, we have uh, tourists from uh, Europe, uh, UK, uh, Holland, uh, Germany, France. This is the best uh, time for business uh, for Canada. It's good for the hotel as well as for this uh, part of Sri Lanka as well. It's a time for Sri Lanka to showcase itself to the world. And you can't deny it does so in a spectacular fashion.